right, we are live. Uh, thanks for joining. A bunch of stuff to discuss today. Insanely terrible uh, unemployment numbers are going to be at the top of everyone's minds. But stocks went higher. Must have been priced in. Must have thought it was going to be much, much worse. We're going to discuss that. Main thing, of course, today, though, uh, and I'll, I'll get to that in just a second, is my... <laughs> I just love this meme. Um, I posted this on Facebook. We're going to go through some of the comments. Real estate is the best investment. Change my mind. I knew there were some people who were going to jump in on that. I knew where I kind of already where they were on it. Um, and so we've got an interesting discussion going on because right now a lot of questions around what, where can you invest your money? Where does it make sense to invest money? Or should you just pull your money to the side and put it in cash? That's one thing that a lot of people are talking about now. Just, oh, cash is king. You know, let me just cash this out. Let me pull cash over. Totally understand that. So we'll go through all that stuff here in a second. Let's start off with... Uh, they're calling it the coronavirus job losses. Um, and there's no real other way to explain it because we had a an economy that was crushing and all of a sudden it was stopped basically by this coronavirus. And I still have a lot of questions around this uh, you know, coronavirus. Is it a coronavirus or is it a bacteria? Um, I didn't know viruses could be airborne. It sounds like uh, the drugs that work for malaria and, and they're giving people Z-Packs and they're getting over coronavirus. It's just a, some, something's weird there. So hopefully we'll get more information on this soon. But as of right now, what we do know is that job losses are awful. So if you remember last week, I said, hey, they were projecting 3.4. So on, when this came out, the projection or the estimate was 3.4 million. We came in at 3.3. Um, and stocks didn't like it that day. And it was kind of, but I was worried, as you recall, I said, I think it's going to be double that. I'm concerned that it's going to be double that and that the stock market's going to get murdered. Well, it was a week early. So this week, today, this morning, first thing in the morning, 6.6 .6 million unemployment claims or jobless claims, as they say. Now, during the Great Recession, this is the last recession that we were in, the housing bubble burst. I had a total loss of 8.7 million. So we're already past that. Now, these jobs, though, and this is the thing I need everyone to focus on. So we're talking about reality here. These 8.7 million jobs that were lost were actually lost. You know, the companies that went out of business, so on and so forth. We haven't gotten there yet. A lot of this is people who are just temporarily out of work. And if you were told, like, for example, we're cl closing a loan for someone who's worked at a hotel chain that you know very well, and she's worked there for 20 plus years, but they don't have any work right now because the place is closed. They're not even allowing people to stay there. So smart thing for her to do in a situation like that is to, you know, if they are going to let someone go is to go and file an unemployment claim. But of course we told not to do that, stay on um, because we're doing a loan here and we wanna keep your job. So um, there's certain situations where, you know, employers are telling people go ahead and, and file and, you know, we'll hire you back. And certain situations where it makes better sense to just stay on depending upon what you have and what you're doing. So if you've got a loan and, you know, I just want everyone to know that mortgage rates are in great shape today. Um, we're seeing a continuous slight improvement as the breakdown that was caused by the feds fire hosing the mortgage industry has basically been throttled and, and is contained now. So um, you're gonna see mortgage rates improve. Um, they improved yesterday, they improved today, they'll improve again tomorrow, and they'll probably improve again Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. I'm looking at Wednesday next week to be a great lock day. That's my guess. Of course, I don't know what's gonna happen. Nobody does, but that's what I'm projecting. Um, and so this is really, really bad. But you'll notice that the market wasn't too concerned with it today. Tesla reported some crazy numbers. Um, we haven't seen the impact of this yet. This hasn't hit us. This is the first signal of this is what's going on. We haven't seen this in quarterly reports yet. We haven't seen this affect uh, the marketplace just yet, at least from a standpoint of the stock marketplace of, you know, quarterly reports. Um, there was some talk that they would not, they would just put a freeze on quarterly reports. That would be crazy insane, uh, but it's possible. There's a lot of things we talk about. So let's look at this, the point of this question. Real estate is the best investment available. Change my mind. Change my mind. Real estate is the best investment. Let's look at a couple things. So first of all, let's look at stocks. This is a Dow Jones. I just did it all the time. You know, when you... When you look at this, yeah, stocks do go up over time. I mean, this is a great looking chart. You know, this is a great looking chart. And this is why, truth be told, stocks work great long term, historically speaking. They work great. 
You can tell the chart does not lie, even though we've got this going on right now. This is the whole Great Recession right here, just that little blip. When you look at it, when you zoom out this far, you go, oh, that wasn't that bad, and then psh, giddy right back up. And this, we could see the same thing. I could be totally wrong about what's happening now. We could just go pff, and obliterate night. My short could get mutilated, and um, I would cry in the shower for days on end. But uh, I don't think that's what's happening. But the hard part about stocks is that they're extremely volatile, which plays on your emotions causing people to make bad decisions. It's much easier to sell a stock than it is to sell a home. You know, you can, you can sell a stock emotionally and then immediately regret it. Um, whereas when you go through the process of selling a home, it's, you can't do that. You have to go through a long process. It's not so easy to just push a button and then go, oh man, I was just, I was in a bad place that day. I've done this. I've gotten out of trades where I was supposed to stay in and my plan was to stay in until a certain date and I just couldn't take the pain anymore. And one day I was just like, you know what? Screw it. I hate this. And then I regretted it a lot. A couple of those I lost a lot um, of, that I could have gained. So you, you have that issue with stocks and that's the, the discipline that is really, really difficult. That's the thing that's really, really tough. So, you know, we, we don't have that with some other things. The other thing here and I'll pull this back up as we're still talking about stocks, is there's no tangible benefit in the interim. Some people say, oh, well, you can get dividends, you know, if you buy this or that. And that may be true, but you don't have the tangible, there's nothing to touch and hold. You just have a number on a computer screen, basically. And if it goes up, you're happy. And if it goes down, you're not. Um, you don't get to use it for anything while you're waiting. It's just that, and that's all it is. Now, that this all said, I'm a believer in stocks. I do buy stocks and sell stocks. I like to buy the indexes. I have a, my own type of strategy that I use that has worked out well for me. Um, I realize it's not something that everyone can use. But for the most part, stocks, a little bit harder to figure out. Play on your emotions. Too easy to make a mistake, in my opinion. It's too easy. Too easy to make a mistake. It's like putting a 12-year-old on a motorcycle uh, for the first time. You know, Can they figure it out? Can they do it? Yeah. Pretty dangerous, though. Let's look at bonds. Here's the U.S. Treasuries. Now, there are other bonds. You could buy bonds in different companies. Um, those have some risk associated with them. These are essentially the quote-unquote no-risk bonds. If risk becomes a factor for the United States Treasury bonds, we have really big problems, much bigger than the coronavirus. So we're just going to call them lowest risk instead of no risk. Fair? Okay. So these are the Treasuries. You'll notice that in order to get to just 1% plus, you've got to go to the 30 year. You've got to go to the 30 year to get 1.2%. Everything else starts with a zero. So that's brutal. Um, you know, bond, I mean, how is this going to get you anywhere? You're almost better off taking your money, buying stuff at garage sales and hawking it on eBay than bonds. I think your money might be safer that way. All right, so what else we got? How about Bitcoin? Here's Bitcoin. Talk about the great unknown. I mean, does anyone even really know what this is? Now, I am, okay, I did buy some Bitcoin. I have made some money in crypto. I'm not touching it ever again. There is too much unknown here. We have no idea this is a new thing. Yes, some people have made a lot of money. Some people have lost a lot of money. Some people have made a lot of money, lost a lot of money. This is one of those things where most people don't understand it yet. Could it be the thing of the future? Could it be something where you buy one Bitcoin and your great, 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 great grandchildren have bajillions of dollars? It totally could be something like that. I just have no idea how that could possibly come. I don't understand it enough. So for me, I don't like investing in stuff that I don't understand. I don't think most people understand crypto. I don't. And if you don't understand something, investing in it is really, really questionable. So I'm going to say that this is something most people should stay away from. Most people should stay away from Bitcoin unless you understand it. If you do, great, go for it. Okay, let's talk about real estate. Real estate is the best, the best investment available. Change my mind. I'm going to show you a couple things here. This is from the St. Louis Fed. Okay, this is the S&P Case-Shiller U.S. National Home Price Index. So this factors in home prices across the country. It's an index that's designed to show you the trend of real estate values nationally. And we can use this to sort of give us an idea 
of what has happened with real estate values. And as you can see, it looks pretty darn good. Not only that, what's cool about this graph is that it'll actually show, you know what, can I zoom in a little? Let me see if this will work. Uh, let's see, clear. No, can't do that. All right, shoot. We're working on the fly here. So these particular shaded areas here are the recessions. And the reason I wanted to zoom in is I want you to be able to see that in this recession here, real estate went higher. In this recession here, it did actually go higher, but it was pretty much flat. Okay, this here, we lost a little bit. This recession here, the dot-com recession, uh, we went higher. This past recession here, the Great Recession, we lost a lot. Real estate values got crushed. But you'll see they were rolling over prior. So the momentum was already down. And then when the real estate itself caused the recession, of course we lost a lot of ground there. Look at the trajectory that we have now, though. You see, that's a, <coughs> that's a real market right there. That is a real market that's making the right kind of move that looks really good. It looks very similar to this move here, doesn't it? It's pretty, pretty similar. So I expect we'll see home values continue to increase during this recession. If we are in a recession, which some people believe we already are, I think that we're going to see this kind of action right here. Maybe this kind of action, maybe flat. Uh, it's possible. We get, could you see a little bit? Yeah. Are we going to see this? No, that is not going to happen. And there's a number of reasons why. Um, but the, if, you, if you understand the totality of what it took to cause this, and how many of those things that caused this that don't exist anymore, you would understand that that is so improbable, it's not reasonable to expect that to take place. What's much more reasonable is to expect this, a small increase, maybe a small decrease, maybe flat. Those are much more reasonable expectations for real estate. But what's the nice thing about it? Let's talk about some of the benefits. We all understand it. Real estate's not complicated to understand. Now, getting into financing and the process of going through escrow and some of those things, they can be difficult, they can be complicated. Uh, but real estate itself is not complicated. We all understand it. We all have to have a place to live. We all pay a mortgage. We either pay our own or we pay someone else's. So which side of the river do you want to be on is the question. And when it, when it looks at it, not only do we understand it, but we get to use it while we're investing in it which is also a huge advantage. Nothing else we really get that. People say, well, you buy gold, it's physical, it's tangible. Yeah, but you don't hold the gold. What are you gonna do with it? Pick up the gold, go, oh, what is a bar of gold? What are you gonna do with the gold? Throw it at someone? It may be real and it may be tangible, but you don't get to use it as a paperweight. It's expensive paperweight. So when you look at these different things, and I know I invested in oil this week, so some, some people are probably thinking, oh, what about oil? I heard you bought oil and oil did go up nicely today, which was great. Um, Trump came out and said that Russia and Saudi Arabia, them doing this price war thing and flooding the market with inventory, and they're going to come to some um, agreement soon is what the president said. We'll see if it's true or not, but that's the reason why oil spiked up today. I'm not going to talk about oil today. Oil, again, is super speculative. It's something that's difficult to understand. It's something that most people shouldn't really be looking at. Gold is probably another one of those things. When we talk about physical assets, things that you can look at, that you can hold on to, that you could, by the way, live in. We know when we buy our primary residence, that's technically a hedge, but a hedge is also an investment, isn't it? If I'm hedging, it's because I'm either protecting an investment or because I'm making an investment. Either way, a hedge is still technically an investment. So if I'm buying my primary residence, I'm hedging my housing costs, I'm fixing them in, which is great, uh, but also not just because I'm hedging my costs, but because one day those costs are gonna become zero. I'm going to own my home free and clear. But in the meantime, I'm going to get the adv uh, advantages of having some tax deductions, principal pay down, paying down my principal into my equity, having the opportunity for appreciation as well, should I need it down the road if I ever decide to sell my real estate. Ideally, you never sell your real estate. If you do, you 1031 it into more real estate. That's the, the ideal structure of how the tax advantages are built for real estate. But most importantly, not only do we get to use it, we get to understand it. We can look and we can see and we can feel pretty confident in the macroeconomics. Why has this continued to happen? Why, and this, by the way, this red arrow was was drawn by the Fed. That's not me, that's them. I can't draw nearly as straight a line as they can, holy smokes. But you know that just shows you the trajectory. Why is that possible? How is it that real estate values could always go up? And it's kind of the same principle as with stocks. 
Although right now, there's more things that concern me about stocks, the IPOs, the, all the companies that are worth so much money that have never made a dollar. That stuff worries me um, beyond his, the historical data with stocks. But it's sort of the same concept that you get more people. The more people you have, the more people who are trying to create a retirement, the more people who are going to put money into a 401k and they're going to buy mutual funds, those mutual funds are going to buy stocks. And so it's a population play. That's really what we're talking about here. They are population plays. If you invest in stocks, you're, you're essentially betting on the population increasing because if the population increases, then more people need cell phones. More people need to buy cars. More people need to buy homes. More people need to go to the store and buy groceries. So the more the, that a population grows, the more it, it feeds toward higher stock prices and also higher real estate values. Because remember, the more people there are, the more homes we need. Well, there's only so much ground. So if we have a, a shortage in inventory, in ground, but we have an increase in, by the way, an exponentially increasing population, then we have a situation where the macroeconomics point in our direction and real estate is super, super solid. And it is by far the best of all these different asset classes to look into. And there's multiple reasons why. Let's continue to look at the charts here. Oops, that was Bitcoin. Sorry, I'm my own producer here. Um, so we understand real estate. Everyone does. It's not hard to understand. We get to use it while we're holding it. We get tax advantages. We get potential for appreciation. We get to pay down principal. If we're buying investment properties, we get cash flow. Um, if we are, we have macroeconomics in our favor. And what I did was, uh, I went ahead and posted this on Facebook and this is the first time I've tried this. So hopefully this will work. Trying to figure out uh, all of the nuances here with uh, my new production software. So I'm doing all this from home these days. So here's the post that I made. This is one of my favorite memes of all time. Um, <laughs> and real estate is the best investment. Changed my mind. That's Steven Crowder, um, who has this show called Louder Crowder. I've never watched it, but I've seen some of his clips. And I know he's kind of a loudmouth guy. and People really like him. Uh, so Rachel says, I still believe it's the best and safest. Agreed. Um, Dan Chapman, he says... Uh, how do you feel about vacation rentals? Well, be honest with you, and I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Will that work? No, it won't. Oh, maybe it will if I do it up here. There we go. How do you feel about vacation rentals? Um, well, with vacation rentals, I think it's a, it, it is a situation where you are taking a more aggressive stance, right? Because if you have an investment property or property you don't live in that you own, you could just rent it out to a long-term tenant. If you decide that you want to be more aggressive and try to get a greater return on your investment, but also take more risk, then you can go the vacation rental route. However, um, in times like these, you're going to get crushed. And that's the trouble with it. It's finicky. It's more risk. So when risk is off, when people start getting put risk off, remember like game off when we were kids in the street, risk off. That's when people start getting out of stocks. That's when people usually start going into bonds. But now bonds aren't returning anything. I just think this cash is going to the sidelines. And I think a lot of this cash that's going to the sidelines is going to buy real estate. Imagine if you were near retirement. You have 500 million, you know, something like that. And you're going, well, what am I going to do? I can put in bonds. I get nothing here. I don't want to invest in the stock market. I already lost 30%. Well, you're going to take your cash and look at ways to buy real estate. And by the way, you can buy real estate, investment real estate, 100% through your retirement accounts. That can be done. I don't think a lot of people know that. Um, and so as a result, I think there will be some people who are talking to their tax guys. There's going to be some people who are making savvy moves. There's going to be people who are doing things that are smart because you can still get five or six caps even here in San Diego. You can get 5%, 6% return owning real estate here in San Diego. In other uh, markets, you can get even more than that. But you don't get the potential for appreciation like you do here. So that's my two cents um, on that particular thought process, Dan. Good question, my friend. Dan's a very smart guy. All right. And Jen, she says, my daughter loves that guy. A lot of people love him, Jen. Thank you for chiming in. Oh, there he is. Tommy Blottenbagger. Yes, I've been waiting for you, sir. This guy, uh, Thomas, is a hysterical individual. One of my good friends. He says, uh, it's the byproduct of capitalism. Now, he is very much uh, a homer for stocks as much as I am a homer for real estate. So that said, I think he and I may have to debate this on uh, an upcoming segment in the near future. So he said, it's a byproduct of capitalism. Stock markets are the main force of capitalism. I'll take the driver's seat versus the byproduct. And I replied to him, who's in the driver's seat? Meow. <laughs> so, uh, so 
here's the deal, Thomas, and we can argue this. See, I, I don't want to just argue with you here having no voice. But the truth is, the stock market was originally created, and the concept behind it was so that companies could get financing. That's what it's supposed to be for. So if I'm a company and I want to grow, I go to the stock market. And I say, okay, I'm going to let the public own some of my company. So I'm going to issue an IPO, right? Initial public offer. I'm going to say, look, I'm, going to, I'm basically willing to sell some of my company to the public so that they can potentially profit as I profit. But I need the money so that I can grow my business. So I go and I sell 50% of my company to, through a public offering. I sell 50% of the stock. I put it on the open market. I IPO it. And then people invest by buying that stock, I get the money. Of course, there's other people who get paid along the ways, but I get paid for, for selling that stock, my, the company. And so that now I have capital. I have capital to grow my business. I can expand into different areas. I can hire more people. I can get new equipment. I can do all those things. That's really what the point and the purpose of the stock market is. We've gone far off the reservation, Tommy. We're way, way off the reservation. We have companies like uh, Uber, Lyft, um, I'm not going to say that one. There's very, very, very big companies that are that were IPOs, stocks are still there, have multi-billion dollar market caps. This is what Steve Bick was talking about yesterday. They're worth 50 billion, but they've never made a profit. How could it be? So many, 80 plus percent of the IPOs in 2019 are all companies that had never made a profit. The last time we saw that was before um, the crash, and that was uh, in dot-com times. So we, I don't think we're in that kind of situation because these particular companies, you know, in the dot, before the dot-com bubble burst, a lot of those companies were just a, a, a concept. They weren't actual organizations with infrastructure that were providing a service or doing something helpful to people. Right now we have like Uber. Yeah, it's not making any money, but everyone knows Uber. Everyone uses Uber. Uber is very good. It actually helps people make money. The poor Uber drivers, by the way, right now are getting crushed. Crushed. No one's Ubering. Everyone's staying home. No one wants to be around anyone else. I mean, an Uber driver's car, I don't know if this if Uber will ever be the same. An Uber driver's car, like that's a germ factory. They just have people in there. It's a turnstile and it's an enclosed area. I mean, that is not good. So for the future, and I'm going to talk about this at a later date, the future of how business is going to change, the future of how our interactions with the businesses are going to change, it's going to be significant. And uh, when you look at the stock market now, there's too much of that. There's just, there's too many companies that have valuations that make absolutely no sense based off of the money that they're earning. They are getting these valuations based off the clout they've created because they've become household names. That is not the purpose of the stock market. And I don't think that you could say that really capitalism is really what it's about either. What it's really about is it's a, it's the, the first form of crowdfunding. The stock market was the, sort of the first form of crowdfunding to say, you know what, hey, we, we want to fund our expansion and our organization here. We're going to sell stock in the open market to different people and see if we can raise some money to go do that. That's not what it's being used for now. Now it is a vehicle to get rich. It is a way that, you know, Companies are building themselves up. There's big real estate companies that appear to be doing this right now. Build yourself up, do an IPO, make a ton of money, and then who cares after that? And that seems to be what a, a lot of these technology companies are doing. And it's scary to me. It's not what it was intended for. I don't like it. I'm not down with it. So that's what's up with that. Uh, but Thomas, I will give you your fair shake here. You deserve it. Uh, thank you, Cristiano. For the kind words and then tommy says hey right now the best investment is equities not real estate and he goes on him and uh, david are in there um sort of going back and forth on this it's actually a really good thread there because tommy makes a good point he says hey listen i want to buy low sell high real estate prices are too high is what he's saying so let's pull that up he's saying you know what real estate prices are too high why would i want to get in and purchase here knowing that you want to buy low and sell high. Well, let's just take a look at this. If you look at every single one of these recessions, let's say we're going into a recession, okay? Only, and look at this, this is the time, okay, so this is the recession period here, all right? So only really this one in a major way, this one in a minor way, 
But this one is so minor. I think this was the real estate was down 1.9% during this one here as a whole. It was down 1.9%. So what was your cost of waiting would be the question. This looks like it's about a one year period. So how much how much did you spend in rent that year? You know, this is probably if you really math this out is probably a push. So we have if you waited until after the recession, you lost money, lost money, pushed, lost money, made money once. And that was the recession that was caused by real estate, the last one. So I, my, my concern is that people are going to just look at this last one and not understand the totality of the circumstances involved and what happened there and why it happened. And that's a whole nother, that's an hour long video for me to create for you to understand that. Watch the big short. Um, it's a great way to do it too. I can't explain it any quicker than that really. But essentially everything was going wrong for real estate here and it was all leading up and it started back here and it, it did this. And we had plenty of warning signs here too. There was plenty of time to get out before this happened because it was so massive. It was the turning of the Titanic. We don't have that right now. What we have, look at this. I mean, really seriously look at, okay, I'm gonna zoom in now. I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try to zoom in. Okay, sorry about that, getting a call. I'm gonna try to zoom in here, see if this can work. Um, I'm gonna show you something, because this is, I think this is super duper crucial. Um, let's see, let me, if I click back on that, can I move it? All right, there we go. So if you look at this, what does this look like? Up, sideways, up, consolidation, move up, consolidation, sideways, move up, sideways, consolidation, move up, sideways, consolidation. It's almost too perfect. I mean, this is exactly what you would want to see in a stable move higher. This was unstable. So we have right here in front of us, we have the data to show us what an unstable upward move looks like and what a stable upward move looks like in anything. I mean, if the, this could be stocks, this could be oil, this could be real estate, it doesn't matter. You can tell the market never lies and the price action never lies either. So let's look at this again. So this is the, the market action for real estate right before the crash, right? This is the crash of 2008 where real estate values got hammered. Look at the move up coming into that. Look at how smooth and just purely higher it was. There was no setbacks, there was no consolidation, there was no pullbacks at all, okay? Now when we look, when things turned around right here, look, we moved, we moved a leg up and then we kind of took a little breather and moved, went off the side. That's important. That's really, really important for the market to stabilize and go, okay, new normal, boom, new normal, boom, new normal. And these are small moves but they're moves in the right direction. Boom, new normal, boom, new normal. And now here we are. So the, the possibility for this is almost 0%. I mean, it is almost 0%. Now, what we are looking at is unprecedented amounts, as we talked about earlier, unprecedented amounts of unemployment potential. Who knows how far out this is gonna go? These are all the jobs that were created since the Great Recession. So we put on 24 million, almost 25 million jobs. How many of those are gonna get lost? You know, right now we're already past the Great Recession numbers, but we do have some differences there. So we don't know what the impact of this is going to be. This is the big question mark. But based on the modeling and everything that's been that they've been talking about through the administration, through the Coronavirus Task Force, which has been they've been doing like two hour press briefings every day, which obviously is impossible to watch the whole thing if, if you're working. If you aren't working, you can watch the whole thing. Uh, but they're, they're giving you all the information so that you know what's happening there. And they're telling you in real time, these are the modelings is what we're projecting. They're saying in two to three weeks, we're going to hit the peak for the death toll, and then it's going to start to taper off. Well, if we, if we can really have things back to normal by third quarter, right? And we just started second quarter. So I'm giving us 90 days, 90 days to get through the worst part, get to the end of this month, say, okay, hey, we're gonna spend another couple of weeks doing social distancing, do this and that. And then we're gonna send people back to work starting in June. And then maybe by July, we're sort of back to a normal movement. I'm, that's why I'm giving it 90 days from now. Then we still have plenty of time. There's plenty of time. That's really not a long time. When we go back, let's go back and look at this one. How long did this go on for? You know, this, this, this is where the peak was. Right? This was 2006, I believe, or maybe it was 2007, somewhere right in there. That was the peak in prices. Um, and I remember I sold my house right here, and I was an idiot for this amount of time. 
and then I was a genius after that. But then now I look back and if I had kept it, I still would be up. <laughs> that's real estate, man. It's just, that's just how it works. Over time, you just win, you win, you win. But this right here, so let's say this is 2007 to 2009. Let's say it's three years, two and a half, three years from the top to the bottom. And that was a really, really, really big fall. We had a lot of pain along the way. If we only have two or three months, pause here if that's really all it can be if it's really only a two or three month pause there's no way it could be that bad than the two to three year shellacking that we took that was caused by financing and real estate it's just it's just not likely so if we can take that one scenario off the table then i think we put ourselves in a situation where it's very difficult to argue that real estate is not the best place to be investing your money, not just because we all have to have a place to live, but because the other investments just simply don't provide as many opportunities, um, not just to grow your capital, but to also have tax advantages and so forth, um, and also usability, something that's tangible that you can actually use while you own it. So uh, very good stuff there on the page. I will do more of that. Um, I hope this is really helpful for you. Share this with anyone who you want to have understand kind of what's going on. If you have someone who's looking at buying real estate, um, someone maybe who's looking at selling real estate and you want them to kind of know what's going on, this would be a good video to share with them so they can kind of understand like, okay, what are we really looking at here and the different asset classes that are taking place that people have the opportunity to invest in, what's really going on. And by the way, I forgot to talk about cash. A lot of people are saying, you know what, I'm in, I'm in cash. I'm just going to cash. I understand that and there's nothing wrong ever with being in cash as long as while you're in cash you're not a zombie so if you're gonna go to cash don't go to cash and then forget and just look the other way if you're going to go to cash you have to have your eyes on opportunities because the whole point of having cash is so that you can jump on something when you see an opportunity to invest in a business to buy uh, an investment property so on and so forth you have to look be looking for opportunities. So if you're in cash, that is actually not a passive position. That is an extremely active position where you need to be hunting, hunting, hunting for something because just sitting in cash ain't going to cut it. And I think everybody realizes that. Okay. Um, I'm going to get back to work. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Share this video. If you